Welcome to What I'm Reading. This time I want to talk about My Grandmother's Hands by Resma Menachem. I was recommended this book by two women that I highly respect, and so I was excited to get my hands on it, and I'm just now getting into it. If you want to join me, I just got to chapter three, but I wanted to share this to, to give folks a teaser of what it's about. I think this book is essential in thinking about how we heal from white supremacy, and to me it feels very similar to the work that I've learned in generative somatics. And so I wanted to share a bit about how it starts and how it's framed and invite you to be a part of it. So the main gist of this book is talking about how white supremacy gets in our bodies, that it's not just in our minds and our policies and our laws, that it literally gets in our bodies, in our nervous systems, affects our ability to fight, flight, freeze, appease, and have our basic functions he talks about the white body the black body and the police body and how white supremacy shapes not just our thinking but also how it lives and breathes in us one of the ideas that i think is important from this book is that no amount of discussion training laws legislation will rid us fully of white body supremacy and that's his idea to talk about the fact that white supremacy isn't just about laws and norms that it's also about the body so he talks about white body supremacy so that none of that kind of mind or uh, talk or action will rid ourselves of it that it's going to require also metabolizing the trauma that has occurred because of white supremacy through our body and so this book is all about healing and all about understanding how our bodies whether we are in white skin, black skin, or in police uniform, because they talk about regardless of, of race, the police body is shaped specifically by white supremacy. Um, and there's also room for other racial ethnic groups, but he's pretty clear that there's a particular way in which black and white bodies have been shaped here in the United States. One of the other ideas that I think is intriguing from this book and is starting to be understood on a more biological and molecular level is how trauma can be passed down through generations. And that it's not a given, but that it's possible that the trauma and the way in which the body is shaped to respond and, and even actually our DNA can be intergenerational. I recently met in Kem Ndofo who gave a beautiful example of, of how this happens. So if we think about our DNA as a piano and you have all the keys in the piano, that the ways in which genes can be turned off and on is like learning a different song on the piano. So if my grandparents played a certain song on the piano, given this is called my grandmother's hands, if my grandmother's hands played a certain song on the piano, then that's in my, in my consciousness. It's, it's going to feel comfortable to my keys to have those notes played, and then that can get passed on. That doesn't mean that we can't play a different tune, but that that means that that might be our go-to tune or it might be really easy for our genes to turn that on, right? And so this book brings together some of the ideas, like I said, that we're learning more about in terms of epigenetics and genetics, and this idea of healing the body, the soma, not just the mind, and has a beautiful arc of reading and thinking, but also practice. So this book is one where you'll be given a practice and you're asked to do it. Like literally put down the book and do the practice. So if this is something that's intriguing to you, thinking about how to heal from the trauma of white supremacy, pick it up. Let me know what you think as you're going through the readings and you're, and you're practicing the different activities. I think that this book is one that will help us all actually heal from white supremacy. And so I'm excited to share it with you and I hope you join me.